Hi guys, this is uh, Luther here from Luther's Woodworking. I just want to do a quick video on how I make these uh, screw saw pitches that I've been posting on my Facebook page if you followed me. Um, been making a lot of them in the last few months. So uh, I'm just going to switch the camera around here and we'll get started. I'll show you what I'll all go through just to make these pitches. All right, so the first thing what you got to do and and let me just show you right here off the bat. Um, here's a horse picture that I'm working on right now. Now, I, I get a lot of my uh, patterns from uh, Etsy, Alex Fox, Charles Deering, uh, different uh, people that design these patterns. And the first thing I do is I decide where I'm going to buy the pattern from. And then you end up printing it off on your printer. Now, most... If you print it off on your printer, it's going to be an 8 and a half, 11 sheet of paper, uh, all these patterns. Um, then what I do, because here, uh, here is the 8 and a half, 11 piece of paper, and I printed this horse pattern off. What I do next is determine what size of um, picture I want this to be. I don't, want it, I don't want it to be 8 and a half by 11, so I take it down to my local print shop and I'll have it enlarged so for this one here and this is the one I'm working on right now I got it enlarged a little bit larger you can see right here here's the original copy right here and then there's the, the bigger one right there um, once I get it enlarged to the size I want then I have to um, determine what size I have to cut the wood for the uh, backing and the front piece that I'm actually going to cut. Um, now, the lumber I use is not Baltic birch. I use a, a lumber called Tiger Ply. Um, and here it is right here. It's a real nice uh, plywood. Um, both sides is really nice on this plywood. Um, it's a high-grade cabinet plywood. Um, it's not Baltic birch, um, although... It is hard to tell between this and Baltic birch. It's a really nice piece of plywood. Um, you can get it in several different thicknesses. Uh, I use two quarter inch pieces for these pitches that I do. One quarter inch piece for the actual pitcher that I'm cutting out. And then this will be the backing. This piece right here is the backing piece for this pitcher. Um, and then the next thing I do once I get my plywood cut to the size... I'm going to put the green tape on, the painter's tape on, and then I'm going to apply my picture. Now, one thing you got to remember, and let me just quick grab over here. I'm going to show you. One thing you got to remember when you're designing your um, picture on your piece of wood here, you got to remember the, the frame. The frame is going to take up so much space on each side of your picture top and bottom like this here so you got to remember when you put your picture on your uh, board keep in mind the frame it's going to take up a little bit of a space on each side and top and bottom so now this one here you can see i already got it applied to my tape and i did start working on this picture right here i got 10 holes cut right here I got 10 holes cut up here. Um, so this is going to be a couple days probably working on this picture right here. But I'd rather enlarge these prints to whatever size I want to do. Now here is a, a squirrel, not a squirrel, a chipmunk picture that I did. And I already got it framed up. And you can see right there, I left the top part natural and then the backing part of the wood I actually stained the color so you can see that it actually um, has a little bit of a color to it um, that way. Uh, a lot of them that I do, the backing piece will be black. And if you look at my Facebook page, you'll see a lot of them are black. Uh, just depends what you want. Um, so as I'm cutting this, now I know when you download these patterns, it doesn't really tell you how many holes are in uh, the pattern itself so what I do and I know a lot of people 
um, don't do this. A lot of people had said, why do you do it? But I got a booklet right here, and I keep track of, like on this horse picture right here, I keep track of when I start and stop it, how many holes. So like right here, you'll see November 15th, I started at 10.20 in the morning to 10.50, I did 10 holes. Now, when I start these pitches, I will drill 10, only 10 holes, and then I'll cut 10 holes. And what I do is I have a um, Dremel tool here mounted into a um, plunger, and then I got this real tiny, small drill bit, no bigger than the actual blade I use for the scroll saw. And the blade I use for the scroll saw is a two slash zero. Um, so it's a very small blade. I think it's the smallest blade they make. So what I do is I only drill 10 holes at a time. And then I'll cut 10 holes. And that way I can keep track of the number of holes real easy. I, I drill 10, cut 10. Drill 10 and cut 10. So you can see right here, on November 15th, I did 10 holes. Well, then I didn't work on this picture until the next day, November 16th. Um, and I did another 10 holes and then I'll just keep on going down the line here as I do this It may take I may work on it four or five six days or whatever whenever I get time to work on it I'll work on it now if I go by back here in the, in the book here um, That particular chipmunk that I showed you this one right here Okay, so this one is done I can look at this here and I can say well I worked on it three days it took 3.1 hours to do, and it's got a total of 76 holes. Now, the reason I keep track of this, because so many people ask me, how many holes are in the picture, or how long did it take you to do? So now I can tell them exactly how long it took me to cut it out, how many holes are in the picture. And also, I use this kind of as a guide to uh, figuring out what I'm going to sell this particular picture for. This one here I got for $65. Now, these prices that I put on these pictures may work in the area that I'm in. It may not work. I don't know. I have not tried selling any of these yet. So I don't know if $65 is too much, too less. Uh, some of these pictures I do run into the hundreds of dollars. <clears throat> so... We'll see once I go to a show, see if it all works out with the price. I can always adjust the price. And when I figure that price, I'm only figuring the cut time, the 3.1 hours. That's not figuring the time making the frame, the staining, the painting, or anything like that. All I'm doing is figuring out my price according to the hours that I got stuck in it. So if you go back here one more, here is the Santa Claus I did. Um, I worked four days on it. it took 5.1 hours to do. And there's all my times that I worked, you know, 15, 20 minutes here, and then all the different holes I put in. Some days I do more, some days I do less. The Santa Claus one had 144 holes. So it wasn't too bad and um, turned out really nice. We'll see. And then the price on that I got for $100. Like I said, we'll see if that price will work in the area that I, um, the area that I'm in. So we'll see if it works. Um, so once I get it cut out, though, and I got once I get this done and cut out, what I do then is we'll have to take all the tape off, the pattern off, and that takes a little bit of time right there. You know, probably a good 20, 30 minutes. Just sometimes just to take all that tape and pattern off. Then, let me just swing over here. I'll show you exactly what we do then. I have to figure out what I'm going to do as far as the backing. The backing could be painted black. It could be left natural like that chipmunk I showed you. Or like on this dinosaur I did here, I did the backing board green. So it looks pretty nice. kind of gives a green color to this dinosaur. Now, this dinosaur was, um, I think this dinosaur took about 10 and a half hours to do this one here. But once I get it cut out and put on my backing, I'm going to glue that backing to this top piece. And you can see right here, this one I glued. 
Um, I use all these clamps to glue around the edges because you want your edges to be nice and tight all the way around. And then as it's gluing around the edges, I have all these cans of soup and whatever I use from the kitchen. I probably put 25 of these cans on top of this picture. And you can see this is only two, but I'll have like 25 of them to hold all this cut part down because you want all this down and not loose or, or wiggling in there. You want all that glued down nice. So when you glue these pictures, you want to make sure you get glue on all this stuff so it doesn't uh, push up and down. And this picture is actually done. I'm going to take all the clamps off this picture and then after I take the clamps off, I will t then um, sand all these edges right here. I'll take this edge right here and I'll put that on a sander and I'll sand all these edges nice and clean and make everything nice and squared all up. Once I got that done, the next thing we do is uh, measure for a frame. And then I just build a frame and we know the frame is going to fit because we got everything all sanded smooth and everything is going to fit nice. So I measure for a frame and I build a frame. Now the frame, that might be a whole different video um, that I might do, but I build a frame and then what we do then is we put an oil on this. I use a, a boiled linseed oil that we put on this after I take all these clamps off. After we take all these clamps off, we'll sand this and we'll put a boiled linseed oil on this picture. And that really brings out the grain of the wood when you use that boiled linseed oil on this uh, plywood. And you can see right here, this picture right here of the dinosaur, it's kind of light colored wood. But let me just go over to this chipmunk one here. You can see a chipmunk. You can see the difference in the color of the wood. It kind of brings out the grain, turns it a little bit darker, but it makes it look really, really nice. Um, and I think I got a walnut stain on that frame right there. Um, so that turned out really nice. Um, so that basically is about it. And then uh, in the back of these pictures, I use... A little clip to hold the hold the pictures together in the frame but it actually turns out pretty nice it's a pretty simple process I go through in making these and then we'll put some sort of hanging um, uh, thing on the back a wire or something to hang the picture with and then it'll pretty much be done so that's about it as far as making these pictures other than it takes a little bit of time to make some of these pictures some of these pictures I got 18 20 hours stuck in the picture um this one here is probably going to take me maybe i don't know eight hours to do i'm not sure i only got a few i only got about an hour or so in this picture let me see right here horses i probably got an hour probably an hour in this picture just cutting these couple little areas right here but that's pretty much it you know as far as doing these pictures and um, I know I'm going to get a lot of people telling me why do I keep track of a lot of this stuff. But I just do it for the purpose of um, uh, pricing and just people ask me how long it takes. Here is the, the Alex Fox the duck one. I worked on it for three days. Took 6.5 hours. And there's 151 holes. So it's real easy to keep track um, like I say, I do 10, I drill 10 holes and I cut 10 holes. That way you don't get mixed up as far as how many holes you got drilled and trying to keep track of this and that. I drill 10 holes and cut 10 holes. So pretty much that is it. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell because I will have more videos coming out. I just thought I'd throw this out there if anybody else is doing these pictures or kind of want to see how I do it um, so we'll uh, end this video and hopefully you liked it and uh, we'll see you in the next one